This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Happy Aloha Friday, and welcome to Hawaii is my mainland. I'm Kaui Lucas. We live stream Fridays at 3 p.m. The videos are available anytime thereafter on YouTube and thinktechhawaii.com. And the podcast is on iTunes. For 25 years, the Hawaii Forest Industry Association has sponsored a jury woodworking exhibition, Nala'au o Hawaii, the Hawaii Wood Show celebrates the audacious talent of artisans working in Hawaii with locally grown woods. This year, a new annual show for students titled I Squared Innovation and Imagination is being added. My guests today are Peter Simmons of the Hawaii Forest Institute, Chris Jugetta, president of AIAS at the University of Hawaii Manoa, and Iolani student Issa Nishioka. Welcome. Well, gentlemen, um, I don't often have the honor of having three guests, and certainly not <laughs> such talented ones. Um, I hear, Peter, that this is um, in some great measure your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for putting it that way. <laughs> um, so why do we have this show, and why do we keep having this show? Okay, well, the history, uh, brief history is that 25 years ago, a little more than that, I was walking out of a wood show, a really good one in Hilo at the Wailoa Center, and everything there was just beautiful Hawaiian woodworking, uh, and everything was all solid koa. And as I was leaving, I realized uh, there was one display, one piece that was um, made out of veneer, out of koa veneer, and it was some snowflakes hanging right near the door. And I, it occurred to me uh, that I knew, uh, because I knew a bit about the, uh, how much resource of coal was left uh, on the land and available uh, for uh, art, and, art, and, uh, art and stewardship. And I knew also that there were a lot of exotic woods, uh, not, from the, not from Hawaii woods, that were also quite beautiful. And I also knew we had wonderful craftsmen and artisans in wood. And that's when it occurred to me that maybe we could have another show, a statewide show, that would challenge our woodworkers to use less koa. So the first show had a subtitle of the 10% koa challenge, and also use, uh, give rewards, really, for people using either under, un, uh, less utilized woods or uh, woods not from Hawaii originally. So we have uh, different types of eucalyptus that are being used. Uh, we have uh, monkey pod being used. And we have uh, much less koa. And the koa that is being used is mostly being used as a veneer uh, on, the, on the wood, so uh, on, the, on the furniture. I think we have a picture of, of the um, postcard that has uh, a lot of the um, objects over the years that kind of gives a good um, sort of montage of, of what the diversity in the show is. Um, so you can see there's, there's a whole lot of different woods here. Um, is it still a 10% show? Uh, no longer. Uh, we do have some uh, solid co pieces coming, especially in bowls and, 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 uh, and art objects. Uh, but the spirit of the show is that we would utilize what coal we do use uh, uh, very wisely. And also, I, I neglected to mention that the idea was to get a picture of these woods, get, get a, the woods in front of architects and designers and the general public so that they could all appreciate them and we could all be challenged in the future to use them uh, for higher and higher, better purposes. So how are we doing on that um, higher and better purposes? Well, some of the pieces from the very first show are still beautiful. In fact, they all are beautiful. Um, but I think the challenges uh, of trying to utilize koa more efficiently uh, have really taken hold. And you'll see a lot more veneering around the state uh, and uh, as well as at the show. And the range of local woods that are showing up uh, is just spectacular. And I think everyone has learned a bit more about what's available, and hopefully uh, we'll have greater demand for Hawaiian-grown woods uh, in the future. So, so why not koa? 
Well, there is an abundance of koa. Um, it's not endangered, but it is a precious resource. And it uh, behooves us to be wise with the management and use of our resources. And so that becomes a flagship of kind of how we are. And um, we think of the beautiful musical instruments that are made uh, with koa, ukulele. Very thin, very, very small amount of koa goes into that. And a great deal of artisanship and craftsmanship. So really it's to show the, craftsman, the craftsmanship and artisanship of the people of Hawaii and not to be wasteful with our resources. Okay, so this show is actually opening this afternoon. I guess we're all going to heli on over. There's a talk at 5 p.m. by one of the jurors. Uh, and then the show's going to be up for a couple of weeks until October 8th at Lini Kona at the Honolulu Museum of Art. Um, and you can see that Mark Safiri's lecture is tonight. Um, he is one of three judges, the other two being John Gongzer and Noe Tanigawa, a familiar name to most here in Hawaii. So here we see the I Squared Challenge, Innovation and, Im and Imagination for students of all ages, it says, but um, turns out that they're from three different, three different institutions. Um, Iolani, yay, <laughs> even though I went to Punahou, oh, it's okay. That hurts. <laughs> um, and uh, UH, the, you're yeah. from the School of Architecture, Chris? Yes, correct. And, mm -hmm. and what are those funny letters after your name? Um, it's the AIAS, it's the American Institute of Architect Architecture Students. So we're just a student organization under a national, so they have a national AIS, and then we're the Hawaii chapter. So, yeah. So you're an architecture student, but yes. you have a piece in the show, right? Yes. How did that happen? Well, I, so I work under um, the wood shop, because we do a lot of, um, we actually do a lot of like architecture models. So I'm one of the shop assistants who run a laser cutter, a CNC machine, a CNC so, machine? What's that? Yes, it's a commu computer enumerated or computationally enumerated, enumerated um, computer, and it's run from like a like a router bit. Basically, it's you can think of it like a reverse three D printer. Instead of adding material, you're taking out material. Sure, I'll think of it as a reverse three D printer. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> That's the way I explain it too. It's it's like the easiest way I can explain it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And um, Eason, how about you? How did you, um, you're from Iolani, and that's the other school besides. So there's UH Architecture, there's UH Art, and fortunately we have some genuine youngsters um, who are, are grabbing these um, hand tools and, and playing with them. How how did you get into the show? Uh, my art teacher approached me about whether or not we wanted to participate. So. Me and a couple of other students decided that we would, and it turned out to be a really great experience for us. How many of you from Iolani are there? I believe there's around seven that have entered. Wow, excellent, yeah. mm -hmm. excellent. So you worked with wood before. I mean, this is an art class, not a shop class. Right. Um, but you're, you've worked with um, wood before. Mm -hmm. We have um, we have some of your 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 artworks actually, Eason, um, and I just can you talk about them? Uh, sure. So this one is I titled it Makani Aina, and it's basically some mango, and I hand carved it, a little bit of a torching, and then I was able to put it on a nice base, and. So this is some Cuban mahogany uh, live edge cups, I guess, that I turned on the lathe. Yeah. Live edge. Right. So live edge just refers to, I suppose, the orientation of the wood when it was turned. And when you turn it in a certain way, the, the edge of it is different compared to a traditional flat edge. Huh. OK. And this is the piece that was entered into the wood chill. So I called it ripples. And the two red panels are eucalyptus that I was able to turn on the lathe. And the glass 
which is the blue part in the middle, I was actually able to make a form and then cast it. Wow, spectacular. That's glass. Yeah. Okay, that's just my ignorance. I looked at that and said, oh, he painted the wood. How interesting. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> wow. Um, so casting glass, um, that, that must have taken a while. To, have you cast glass before? I Yes, I've tried it before. And then the more you do it, I guess, the more accustomed to the process you get. Hmm. So that um, the wood that um, you got to the eucalyptus, um, I forgot what else it was. Or was it just Primarily eucalyptus? eucalyptus. Yes. Yeah. Um, where did that come from? So that was, I guess, part of the challenge. They gave us about, I want to say, 10 board feet of lumber. And within it, I had eucalyptus pieces. So I cut it, glued it together, and then turned it to get that round shape. So that's another part of this um, challenge. Maybe you can speak to that, Chris, about that you were given wood? Yes, we were. Um, how, did, how did that work? Um, it was donated to us, actually, from like a bunch of different organizations and other people. So we we're very thankful for that. It actually um, motivated a bunch of students in our architecture school, because we had, um, usually we run like a furniture class and students are supposed to spend their own money on wood. But fortunately, we got people who were generous enough to donate to us. And I think this year we had at least like 10 people who entered. Wow, nice. Yeah. Peter, did you have anything to do with that wood sourcing or the organization? Not this year, but uh, a lot of the members that are sawmillers uh, would contribute to you know, schools and this contest for sure, yeah. Now that sounds like a really good use for some of the the trees that come down that our arborists take down and then what happens to them. I, I love the idea of students um, making furniture or, or art with them. So um, again, this show is, is opening tonight. And are you all going to be there? Yes. Yes? I believe so, of course. Oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> Um, and um, there's um, there's uh, seven from Iolani, there's about ten from UH. And um, Peter, do you have any idea how many artists are involved? I think there might be 35 or so. Wow, yeah. nice. And and some artists have more than one piece. Two or three pieces, some of yeah. them, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, we're going to take a little break and come back and talk more about the show. Living in this crazy world. So caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way, there's got to be solution, how to make a brighter day. For every game day, assign a designated driver. Welcome back to Hawaii is my mainland. I'm Kali Lucas. With me today are three gentlemen who are all involved with the show that's opening today at Linikona School, uh, the Hawaii Wood Show. This is the 25th anniversary for the Wood Show, but it's the first show that is including a new category, Innovation and Challenge, which they're calling uh, Innovation and Imagination. Imagination, which is the I Squared Challenge. So, um, Ethan, mm -hmm. um, tell me what when you got started, when you got into Wood. How did how did it how did you and Wood get together? Okay, well, I guess from a young age, I was always pretty interested in like tinkering with stuff. So I'd always like try to pound nails together, but it was there was no skill involved. But <laughs> when I got to high school, I decided to take the art class, which we can work with anything from wood, and jewelry, and glass. 
And as the years progressed, I really started to enjoy it more. And then my skills have also gotten a lot better. So do you spend time um, in other aspects of wood? I mean, do you go to, do you see wood shows, or do you go to look at um, woodworks, or, or play with lathes, or um, outside of school? I mean, do you, or is it pretty much in the context of school? I do have a lathe at home, and okay. yeah, I'm able to make a couple of things on that. But the school has a, a bigger lathe that's a better and easier to use. So one of your pieces, <clears throat> excuse me, was hand carved. Mm -hmm. How was that as an experience, as a maker's experience? It was it was pretty eye opening to see how, you know, with like the use of tools, the interesting textures and shapes that we can get. Like when you think of the lathe, most everything that comes off of it is round, but if you can carve things, you can change the textures and forms. Very cool. And how about you, Chris? Um, I got into woodworking when I started um, working with my dad, because he's a contractor. So we started building like small residentials. And then with that experience, I got into working at the wood shop in my school. And that just opened me up, because relating back to architecture, we're supposed to design um, like innovatively, but in order to, de to design, you need to think about the build process of it. So it, there's a whole like design build prospect. And it's a really um, like a great exposure, um, just thinking of things in your head and then actually like bring it into life. So um, I got that passion into trying to build stuff. So how long have you been working with wood? Um, about like a year and a half now. Okay. <laughs> so like, I'm like really new with it. Yeah. So you're the, you're the old man. <laughs> <laughs> He's more experienced. I'm I'm surprised. I wish I was into that in high school. And how about you, Peter? Do you do woodwork? Oh yeah, lifelong woodworker. Uh, just a regular woodsy guy. Um, I come I come every year to be humbled by the uh, awesome work that I see. <laughs> And what I've just seen on the on the video monitor here from you guys looks awesome as well. <laughs> really, really nice, good good thinking going on in there. Thank you. Yeah, good balance and uh, good textures. Yeah, very good. So, what do you like to make? Oh, I started out making furniture because I couldn't afford it, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then I got a lathe because I didn't have the time to make furniture <laughs> and I could make objects on a lathe. Mm. And now I'm retired, and so uh, I have time to make things. And so uh, my last project is making doors for my house. I think I've got 17 made and hung. Just keep at it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so are those uh, how, doors? I'm, I'm sort of shocked. <laughs> we're, we're talking about all these woods like mango and koa and eucalypts. What do you make doors out of? Well, um, kind of interesting story. Uh, the hurricane uh, came and hit the uh, Hawaii Island pretty hard about four years ago, I believe it was, and knocked down uh, some major trees in an arboretum in Keaau, at the Shipman Arboretum in Keaau. And uh, they were already, they were old trees at that point, maybe 75 uh, years old or 80. And uh, Jay Warner, uh, a uh, sawyer, went and saw them, and uh, I ended up with some of it to make into doors. So my wife designed them and I made them. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a tried and true formula. <laughs> um, and um, I, I want to ask a little about those sake cups. They were pretty amazing. Um, but I couldn't tell from the picture how big they were. He said, um, how big are they? Well, maybe that tall, that wide. OK, big cups of <laughs> They're sake. pretty big, but <laughs> yeah. About five inches? <laughs> yeah, maybe not best for using it, but. <laughs> Big sake cups. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what is your piece that's in the show, Chris? Uh, I did like a iris movement mechanism. So I. I asked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. it it's, um, it came from a past um, elective course that we had in architecture school, um, where we played around with like an Arduino. It's like a small little computer and then you hook it up into a stepper motor. So you get to program, you get to bring those two together and program it and then control like the movement of it. So pretty much it's, my whole piece is like a, 
like an aperture of a camera where one gear drives and then it drives the whole mechanism and then it gives like this um, this like closing and opening movement. I wish I had a picture or a video. <laughs> and, and, it's not, and it's not your fault. Yeah, I'm, I'm so pleased I'm to, to have you here today. But it was kind of a last minute thing. So Come to the show and you'll yep, see it. That's actually exactly. the point of all of this, yes. is that um, to get people to come and, and really see, as Peter talked about, the incredible diversity of woods. And the woods for this show are, uh, or for your innovation and challenge that were given to you, I think they had to be either locally grown or or pre-used mm -hmm. is that right mm -hmm. and they were they were uh, reclaimed like Hawaiian exotic winds okay. did you get to pick the wood or uh, were you just handed a bundle and they said here you, you make some have better. make, make <laughs> yeah, something it's more yeah. of a bundle mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think there was like Norfolk pine eucalyptus um, there was some coa veneer, big, pretty big variety of wood. And you already know how to identify all of these woods? <laughs> yeah, I guess the Norfolk is uh, pretty characteristic because it's pretty white, and the spalting will turn it gray, and the knots are just a really bright red, so quite characteristic. And um, Peter, isn't this awesome? You know that these kids oh, are like yeah, <laughs> yeah. they know what woods they're using and they know about them. But tell us more about the forest part of this. Well, uh, 25 years ago, um, Kamehameha Schools was reforesting with koa, and I don't believe there was too much other activity going on with koa at that time. Uh, but now, if you look, you'll see uh, the slopes of Mount Loa, the uh, western slope of Mount Loa, is largely being. Uh, reforested or at least has been rededicated to growing uh, native forest and uh, and less so uh, growing uh, cattle uh, that, and that's you could go to the uh, National Park that acquired Kahuku Ranch and they've trans they're transforming that into a more native setting uh, from pasture land the Nature Conservancy is their neighbor uh, you can go along that slope and you'll just see a transformation of what people are uh, have repurposed their lands for, and Kamehameha as well. So you'll see uh, literally 100,000 acres of, of land that was formerly dedicated toward cattle that has been repurposed now uh, toward growing koa, and that's been over a period of over 25 years. Not entirely, uh, the, the Woodshow is not entirely responsible for all of that, <laughs> uh, but also there's been a growing appreciation of eucalyptus uh, and uh, other woods here that uh, previously were not appreciated very much. And uh, things have changed around the world so that new techniques of managing and harvesting and processing eucalyptus have improved greatly. And then an appreciation for the, just the raw beauty of the wood uh, has uh, grown over the years. And so people have become attracted to that at the show and then asked our, our makers uh, to follow up and make them something uh, beautiful. So, uh, and I would say one thing about our, our woodworkers, they are some of the best in the world. You know, a lot of people in Hawaii don't realize that um, for such a small population base that we have such a high quality artisan base, if you will. And this is really, really true. And it, you, could, you can see the history of it all the way back to the ancient Hawaiians, the umeke and uh, calabash that they made uh, with, and not with the modern lathe, uh, <laughs> but, but with a stone tool, uh, were nearly perfectly round and awesome, awesome and beautiful and resembled gourds. And when the missionaries came here, they recognized the uh, advanced artisanship uh, of the Hawaiian people and carving. Uh, as part of that. And uh, then there was the ship's uh, carpenters that came. They were very clever fellows, had to make a lot out of a little, and they added to that tradition. And then all of the other immigrants that have come have brought their woodworking skills and challenged each other. And here at the show, 25 years on, the, the artisans and makers are still challenging one another. And so year after year, you see someone that says, oh, you, you, maybe I could do that. Maybe I could do that. <laughs> so next year you come and you show, and maybe you will do that. And it sounds like uh, with this um, i squared challenge uh, that um, it's very much innovative. You've, you've added moving parts. Yeah. 
<laughs> basically. Have they? Have we ever had moving parts before, Peter? <laughs> well, let's see. It's musical instruments. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that counts. Yeah, yeah. and uh, no, <clears throat> I don't think we've had too many moving parts. A clock, I think a clock or two. But, uh, <laughs> this is pretty cool. I can't wait to look at it. <laughs> Um, so in, in the last two minutes, um, I'd love to hear um, kind of what you've, what this experience has, has done for your a relationship with wood, both of you, Chris and, mm -hmm. and Eason. Go ahead, Chris. Um, with wood, um, I guess my experience is that I need to learn way more. Um, just like, just working with them, there's a lot of factors that tie into it. There's um, the grain, there's aesthetics, there's um, how you're going to cut it, there's how you're going to finish it. So it's a, it was a, a good learning um, process, and I hope that I can enter again next year, and I hope more students will be more involved with it as well. How about you, Eason? Uh, what year are you? Are you? I'm a senior. You're a senior, yeah. so you might not be here next year. Probably not, but... Yeah, maybe I can enter a wood show on the main ladder, wherever I end up. Do you plan to continue with wood? Yeah, definitely. I think so. And Peter, thank you so much for um, over the years. I mean, this is an amazing, uh, an amazing institution. I mean, I myself have—I I don't know how many of them I've, I've gone to, but it's. Um, um, when I think when I first started going, it was at, it was in Waikiki at the um, Royal Hawaiian Center. There, there, there was a show back <laughs> there. Right. So I know the show, shows moved around, um, but it, this is a great place. Yeah. Cheap parking. Good venue. <laughs> and it's a free entrance. And we should mention the volunteers are just awesome. And uh, our head of it all is Marion Yasuda. And this is her 24th year doing it. So she's she didn't do she didn't organize and orchestrate the first one, but she's been here ever since doing it. And she's in her own right one of the best furniture makers around. So Mary Nasuda deserves a big applause. I remember she made something out of a purple wood in one of the early shows I went to, and I. You know, I don't know how long ago it is, but it was way over a decade. <laughs> I'm still thinking about that piece. Yeah, she's quite a designer. So thank you all for coming, and we'll see each other in a little bit um, with these beautiful pieces. <laughs> thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thanks for having us.